most failed ever! <laughs> What's going on guys? I'm Chris and welcome back to another video. So today I'm doing a top 10 favorite Stranger Things characters video, but I'm not doing this alone. Joined by my great friend Trevor from Film Geeks. How are you doing, Trevor? Doing great. Great to be here. It's awesome to have this in-person collab. Before we get into this, make sure to hit the like button, comment down below your top 10 favorite characters in Stranger Things, and go subscribe to Trevor. His link will be down below. But let's go ahead and get into this thing. We're going to take turns from 10, 10, 9, 9, all the way to our number ones. There's probably going to be a lot of similarities and similar characters on this Absolutely. list. But uh, do you want to kickstart or should I? You can go first. I'll go first. All right, number 10 for me, and I think we have the same number 10, is going to be Joyce Byers. Is that yep. your number 10 as Absolutely. well? Absolutely. Yeah, she is the ultimate mom, one of the best moms in fiction, in my opinion. She would do whatever it takes to protect her family and her kid. She's been through way too much, unfortunately. Too much. And when Ona Ryder gives like a hauntingly good performance, especially in season one. I would say season one's her best yeah. because of how much she will go through and do when everyone thinks yeah. she's crazy that she never gave up on her kid. And like the light scene with the Christmas lights going on the oh wall. Oh my gosh. Like, iconic iconic and then when i think of joyce that's the scene i go to every time she, absolutely she's fantastic yeah. ultimate mom like you said. oh yeah no mom will top her in fiction probably but getting into my number nine i actually have 11. now a lot of people might say this is uh, alarmingly low i still love 11 millie bobby brown has become synonymous with that role i just never loved her as much as like other characters because she's a very powerful character but because she's so quiet and kind of dialogueless it's almost harder for me to like fully Attach, right? Attach and like yeah. really connect with her as much as I would like to. Sure. I still, you know, think she is the face of this entire show without question. You know, she is necessary to defeat the evil that they face every season. But I never loved the character as much as I wanted to. She's still top 10 in a badass, though. And number nine's L for me yeah. as well. Yeah. And um, I, I love the character of L, like you said. Yeah. Without her, our team would be screwed. And it, would, it wouldn't really be a show without Eleven. Agreed. But like you said, it's very hard to attach someone, attach your like feelings to this character when she's so dialogue less. But um, in season four, she's really trying to fit in. And in season four, she goes like, back to where it all started to Man. learn how to get her powers again and to see what she really really went through felt really bad for her then and then and it makes her feel even worse when you're like see her at school getting bullied by angela because yeah. you go back then she's always been bullied everywhere she went but 11's great her being at number nine doesn't mean anything it's just i love this character no she's yeah just... like that shows how great this show is written oh with gosh. so many characters that i deeply care for and that's going to be a theme with pretty much every single one of these picks and i think we might have the same number eight Murray? Murray. Murray's number eight. The bald eagle Bauman, the goat of the show, Loki. And I think he's probably the most slept on character in the show. Absolutely. Because people just kind of disregard him. No, no. This guy's a badass. He's hilarious. And in season three, he makes me like laugh out loud multiple times oh, when yeah. they're driving in the car and he's like, why don't you two just admit to each other that you want to screw? <laughs> and they're just like driving. That is such a funny moment, man. <laughs> uh, my favorite moment for Murray would be season four. One, I love when he kicks Yuri's ass with karate. Oh, yeah. I'm a black belt in karate now. He like makes sure she knows that. Yeah. Um, but when he yells, hey, assholes, and he torches oh, my all gosh. the Denver Gorgons, I thought the bald eagle wasn't going to make it through alive. I was so worried. glad he yeah. did. Um, I think at this point you got to keep Murray around. Oh, he's yeah. like the fan. He's like the unsung hero. He's like the fan favorite. Like I don't think anyone doesn't like. He's Murray. the bald eagle, baby. You can't kill Brett Gelman. God no. You Come cannot on. do that. But number seven for me is actually going to be Eddie. Gone too soon. Rest in peace. Um, he's a rock and roll legend forever in my book. Super metal. Um, but yeah, this character was easy to fall in love with. I mean, the reason I think I love Eddie so much and that we all do is that he is like a leader and role model to a group of outsiders who are just trying to fit in. Yep. He's always there. He cares so deeply for those and he just wants to, you know, create a home for people that don't really feel welcomed. And it's really sad to see him go. I'd say it's the saddest death in the entire show. Um, him and Dustin's relationship really is a gut punch because you love them so much. They have this strong bond and then it's torn away from us at the end of the season. I really have this weird sliver of hope that they're going to try and resurrect him yep. in season five. Do they you will. agree? So, I 100 percent think they're going to. Yeah. That's we'll a, see what that, happens, that's man. That's TikTok for another time. That is for another time. At number seven is going to be Lucas for me. Great and pick, Lucas yeah. probably wasn't in my top ten before season four. I always liked Lucas, but season four, the beginning of it, kind of bothered me when he had this almost identity crisis. Do I hang out with the basketball team? Do I hang out with the Hellfire Club, my best friends in the world? And while he technically did choose Hellfire Club, he still was choosing the basketball team. So that always kind of bothered me a little bit. And like, he just wasn't like all there for Max all the way. And he really wanted to be. But in volume two, I fell in love with Lucas all over again. Like the little kid he was being super funny in the beginning seasons and Caleb McLaughlin's performance, I would say probably volume two. The best Damn, you're the best. Yeah. Damn, you're the best. It's very close. Number six on my list is actually going to be a character who was higher for me but fell a little bit. Robin. I really love this character. Let me make that clear. I think that especially in season three, her dynamic with Steve is unmatched. She's kicking ass and solving these Russian codes. Yeah. In this season, I feel like she was 
fairly sidelined. Um, she's not doing the most. I love her again, but she just feels like she's not doing as much as she could have been. And uh, a lot of other characters kind of got to take the spotlight over her in that little group, I think. She still has her really funny moments when they go and investigate Victor Creel. Mm -hmm. And um, yes. I like the possible relationship we're going to see with her and Vicky they're setting up. Also, she's always there for Steve. They develop her relationship with Nancy. There's a lot to love with Robin, but I wish they would have put her in more of a season three role where she is kind of like in a Dustin role this sure. season where she's kind of helping crack the code a little more. At number six for me is going to be Mad Max. Now, Max was my top five. She actually got, was it my number four? She got nudged down just a couple of spots. Yep. And Max shines brightly from when she first gets on scene, uh, screen. Sadie Sink probably has the highest chance of like a Oscar win. I, I think so, yeah. Yeah, she's fantastic. Out of this cast, yes. Dear Billy episodes, obviously at the pinnacle, but like just watching her like literally die in front of us like that right there it hit me so much harder because we had more time with her and i really didn't expect her to die because or now she's in a coma obviously yeah. but like at this moment just in this scene when you're watching it, she's you dead for a minute she's dead so in the moment that she died when you see her get her bones snapped in half and everything i honestly didn't think the duffer brothers were going to do it because they she didn't happen once so i was like okay they're not gonna do this now like what's the point in doing this now and they did it and my jaw drops to the floor, and I could not stop the tears from flowing. But getting into our top five, for me, I have Lucas at number five, a character who was not this high, but he really won me over this season. I think Caleb McLaughlin's performance is really what kind of sold me on Lucas. He's always there for Max. He never leaves her side. He really is a great friend in the end. He was, you know, trying to play some basketball and do Hellfire at the beginning, like you mentioned, but he always comes back to his friends. Always, yeah. And um, I really love his relationship with Max. I hope that they have more to do in season five and that she's not bedridden the whole time yeah. you know i hope that she recovers fully we'll see um but again lucas really stole my heart he kicks jason's ass for the most part and he's a great boyfriend to max and a great friend in general he's a really good friend in general and like when i rewatch uh, uh season four to volume one you really see how much he's trying to help out his friends you yeah. know and i was like gosh I, I was kind of a hater on lucas for a while yeah a little bit was but in volume two, dude, he's unbelievable. Yeah. At number five for me is a character you mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. It's going to be Robin. Yeah. And I when I, I was like, she might go down for me a couple of notches, maybe put Max in there over Robin. But when you watch the episode when they go to interview Victor Creel and Nancy's just kind of being like the boss that Nancy always is, like, let me go, like, let me lead this. No one really has faith in Robin. And that's why I love her so much because no one ever puts their faith in her and she constantly comes back to like surprise yeah, them. Yeah. And she gives us this whole great speech monologue to this dude about why they need to go in there because they don't get the same rights yeah, in the, the, the yeah. field they're in. So when she goes in there and it's just that performance right there made me love her. And then like her clumsiness, her wittiness, how she's always just trying to smile. And she loves Steve. Yeah. Like she like wants One Steve. of the best duos in the show. hundred <laughs> percent. Top five for sure. Yeah. And uh, I love Robin. I will never not love Robin no matter what anyone says. No, yeah. I love her as well. I think that she's going to have an even bigger role to play next season. Uh, my number four is a character you recently mentioned, and that is Max. I think that season four was the best we've seen her. I'd say she's the main character of this season personally. Probably, she is yeah. front and center. It's all about her for the most part, and I was so terrified for her fate multiple times in the season. I think Sadie Sink's performance is what really kind of made me grasp onto her character more this season, seeing her really deal with the death of Billy still, having this trauma in her past, and then obviously Vecna's coming for her. So she's terrified multiple times. I really was scared for Lucas. I was scared for the friend group. Everyone cares about Max so much, especially Steve. He's yeah. such a babysitter. You gotta love him. Yep. Talk about him in a second. But yeah, Max's character was probably one of the MVPs of this season without Absolutely. a doubt. Absolutely, yeah. and like you just said, like she's like going. Through. She's also just yeah, that sarcastic nature too. Yes, she's always able to make light of the shittiest situations. Hundred yeah. percent. Like, do I get one of those cool shirts? Yeah, <laughs> her yeah. delivery is great. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, at number four for me is going to be Eddie Munson. Like you said, gone too soon. Uh, uh, this character has stuck with me more than anyone's. And then I did a, a video about that. Like Max's death was more sad. In the moment, I think I was, but the more I think about it, Eddie's death. I've never been attached to a character like I was with Eddie. And for a character only had one season to shine. Like, he didn't run away this time. He's a hero to us and never changed Eddie Munson. Oh, my gosh. Rest in peace, dude. Like, dude. Uh, we'll get into maybe him coming back in other videos, but wow. Yeah. Super, super sad. Uh, getting into the top three now. Yep. We have the same character, I think, in different order, though. I think that's a lot of people's top three, I want to say. Probably, yes. Uh, my number three is Dustin Henderson, who wow, okay. is the most lovable character in this show. He is the heart in my opinion of the group over yep. mike he's just so sweet and lovable he's hilarious at times too and he's like one of the smarter kids mm -hmm. i feel like oh. he's one of the leaders and people don't give him enough credit for that because a lot of things wouldn't get done without him he's solving the mysteries out here in season four especially um and again him and steve and him and eddie are like two of the best duos in this show absolutely uh so i'm very curious to see how the steve and dustin duo plays out in the final season of the show 
But again, Dustin is just the best. Number three for me is going to be Steve. Okay. And Steve's ability to have duos with multiple characters from yeah. Steve and Nancy's relationship, while it was a little bit rocky, yeah. like that's cool. Steve and Dustin's duo though is oh, absolutely fantastic. Unmatched. And Steve and Robin, like everyone ships that when we find out that when Robin comes out to Steve, that was a huge moment. Yeah. We're like, Steve and Robin, <laughs> it was a huge curveball I threw yeah. us that I loved. I loved the curveball I threw us. And Steve is just a guy who's like, he's always trying to get the girl, but he's always going to be the best babysitter, the best dad, the best mom in the group. And he's tired of getting stuck with the kids, but he's so good at it. And he wants to have six kids, and he basically watches out of six kids the entire freaking show. So getting into my top two, this is where I get conflicted because for the longest time, I've had like my top two favorite characters set in stone, but it's kind of like a switch back and forth. And after season four, it's more or less one and two and one A, one B. So like my one B is actually Steve Harrington. Okay. Um, he was my favorite for the longest time and I still love him. It's just kind of evident to me right now that they don't have as clear of a trajectory for his arc or where he's headed and that's okay. He still kicks a lot of ass this season. He's always been, you know, one of the better written characters from the beginning. If you look at where he started to where he is now, he's come so damn far. Oh my gosh, yeah. And he is a character that I probably would be the most upset for if they were to die. He's just the coolest, like you said. He, he cares the most about the kids. Um, I love Joe Curie as an actor, and there's so many aspects to love about this character. I feel so deeply for him, but I think my number one might kind of take it over. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Um, so. My number two, if I was your number one, yeah. is uh, <laughs> Hopper. Yeah, my number one's Hopper. We can talk about it together. Okay. Um, I've loved this character from day one, always. Like uh, He was always like Team Hopper, Team Hopper, Team Hopper. Yeah. And just David Harbour, I think, is through and through the best actor of the show. I mean, that's yeah, hard to argue against that. Because the way he performs from angry to sad to a guy who's just absolutely heartbroken, who's constantly got this shit under the stick, yeah. and he's constantly trying to like be there for these kids and these family. And I love his relationship with Elle. I really love his dynamic with Mike. And in mm -hmm. Volume 2, when they have that quick little moment together, he's like, mm -hmm. you've grown, you shrunk. <laughs> that was a great moment. Yeah. And uh, Hopper is the ultimate badass, will literally do whatever it takes to get to his family, like a dad would. And he's the ultimate dad. He's the ultimate father figure in this show. And this is the character who's probably been through the most like arcs because yeah. he literally in season one, he's the sheriff of this town that he doesn't really think anything bad's going to happen to. And then he kind of realizes, oh my gosh, season two, he's like a father to Ellen struggling. Season three, he's kind of down in the dumps mm -hmm. and he's having to deal with that. And then he dies essentially coming back to life, getting a new lease on life in season four. And he's kind of questioning his relationships and you know if he should even be worthy of love. And that yeah. was really devastating to see. I think that he needs Joyce in the end. They're perfect for each other. Absolutely. Again, he's a perfect father figure. And he's like the dad of the show. You can't really fully kill him, in my opinion. It would be so gut-wrenching. Yeah. Um, but he's he's the best written character, I think, in the show. He reminds me of like Indiana Jones or that, that trope where it's yeah. like the 80s adventure guy that you just can't help but love yep. and that's hopper yeah 100 and like he does have like those mean dad tendencies but yeah. every time he does it's never like he's just being mean out of nowhere he's being that protective dad yeah like, he's like keep... funny as hell in season four too oh my gosh or season but three excuse he's me he's funny in every season and yeah. i love him so much mm -hmm. and um and then season four he gets like totally jacked dude know? he's a badass he's taking on a demogorgon with a spear and a sword he doesn't care he'll do whatever it takes to get back to his loved ones yep keep the door open three inches oh my gosh uh at number one for me you talked to him about already it's dustin bada bada boom most yep. metal ever this kid uh, Gatton is probably the best young actor of all of them. Every time I watch this show, it just reminds me why I love it so much. And a big part of that is because of Dustin. Like, he's, I call him not even the heart, I call him the glue. Like, he's always thinking of everything. Yeah, that and was a good little he, yeah, comparison there. Thank you very much. Uh, he's always, like, just keeping the team together. And while everyone's always kind of off doing their own thing, he's the one that constantly is, like, always still on a mission. And he always has to figure it out. His little banter back and forth with Steve in season four. But his uh, relationship with Eddie in season four has made me absolutely love him even more. And they're sitting in the upside down rocking out to yeah. uh, Master of Puppets. And Dustin's sitting there just like <laughs> a little dorky all outside. Yeah. And then when he talks to Mr. Munson telling him that Eddie's a hero just shows the, the lengths that this kid can go and his acting ability. And uh, Gatton's great. Dustin's my favorite character. And I think he always will be. He feels like a little brother. Yeah, I, if this was my little brother, I would not be mad. But that's going to do it for our top 10 favorite Stranger Things characters. What are yours? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more Stranger Things content coming very soon. Also, be sure to check out Trevor's channel, Film Geeks, and all of his social medias from TikTok to Instagram. Those are linked down below as well. He also puts out that great Stranger Things content. I'm not letting Stranger Things die. I might have some cool series coming soon, and I will always keep talking this show until season five. But thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you guys later.